Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Gotta Pop. I am very happy that I've got a friend of mine with me, a writer and fellow music lover named Kevin Alexander. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, for those of you who don't know Kevin, I first met him through his work as both a writer and an editor on a great publication on medium.com called The Riff, which is, uh, well, it's all about music. I don't know if you want to say anything more about The Riff, Kevin, than, than that. I mean, it covers all kinds of genres. I just love it. Um, it is built and designed for people to share music they love with people they hope will love it back. So uh, not genre specific. Um, it can be a narrative. It can be a review. Um, it's a pretty wide range within some, you know, as long as it has to do somehow tied back with music uh, and it's, you know, ready to go, we'll take it. So. Yeah, and I'll tell I'll tell you, um, folks who are listening or watching this. I mean, if you've ever thought about going on Medium dot com, I think a lot of people don't know what to expect when they go there because you know you see articles maybe from sometimes occasionally from someone like a Barack Obama who publishes a famous article and it shows up on Medium. But there is a little bit of everything on there. And when I went on, my original intention was to maybe get into fiction and share some short stories there. And then I got myself in trouble because I discovered the riff, and I was reading one article after another about music, and then I started submitting articles there about music and then you know it's just snowballed over the past two years and really if you're a music lover you got to check out this publication from kevin it's awesome well thanks for that uh, a lot of that of course is down to um just some of the fantastic writers that are on there including you oh, well, thank i mean you, you know have, take some <laughs> credit man um <laughs> it's honestly editing it is a pleasure because i get to see a lot of really great stuff before anyone else um, and so I'm basically getting a sneak peek at stuff that I know people are really going to get a lot of value out of. And it's it's just a blast. So it is a blast. And yeah. one th other thing, it's a blast. It's something you've been doing now for, gosh, I, I'm sure it's been over a year now. You've got your own uh, newsletter or Substack, correct? Uh, and yep. I, what is the, can you tell the uh, audience what that is called and a little bit about it? Uh, just turned two, actually. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> and this current iteration just turned two. It's called On Repeat Records. Um, it's on Stubs, Substack. And it started um, kind of in the same way. Uh, I didn't start the riff. I took it over from somebody. Um, but in this case, I wanted something that was a little more direct with people. Um, and obviously, Substack is a great platform to do that with newsletters. Um, and I wanted to where a little more narrowed down to what I like. And I like uh, the tagline is hot takes on cool records, which is which, which I maybe clever by half, but, um, <laughs> you know, I just wanted a place to share cool records, um, and, uh, and kind of plant my flag and build a little community. And, um, you know, over two years, it's been, um, the growth has been slow, but steady. And, um, it's really kind of taken on a life of its own. And, um, you know, like on, on medium, the community makes the experience and it's just, fantastic you know it's not just me talking to people or talking at people anymore it's them responding and talking to each other and you know oh hey if you like this record you really love that record or oh man you gotta you know you gotta check out this artist or um it's a lot so of you know it's a lot of fun um i know i look forward was, to getting the i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off kevin no that's okay um go ahead you know, we share playlists. I share a playlist every week and then people share what they've been listening to. There's record reviews. Um, I try and do interviews with artists, um, which is something I really like doing. It's not always easy to plan around or, or get set up, but um, when they all come together, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Well, that's great. I that that what well, actually you touched upon what I was uh, <laughs> rudely interrupting you about, which is saying that I love getting your uh, newsletters at the beginning of the week, where you know you say what you've been listening to and you share that, you share the playlist, and then, like you said, you see conversations happen in the comments, and it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of fun for music lovers. I, I encourage everyone to check that out. Check out Kevin on the Riff and his newsletter, and uh, Kevin and I share some common interests in music. And if you've looked at the title of today's episode, you will see that. One of the bands that we both like is the Goo Goo Dolls. Have you been a fan for a while, Kevin? I know you've been a fan for a while, probably more <laughs> longer than a lot of us have. Um, I've been a fan of them. I think I first got turned on to them in about eighth grade, so in the late oh, wow. 80s. Yeah. I'm sorry, what time period was that you said? 
<laughs> the late eighties. <laughs> okay, <laughs> our eighth grades were a little different, so I just a little bit. To see, um, I so I I fell into I was really lucky and fell into a group of um, self-professed music nerds, and we were just insatiably curious and hungry for anything new that we could get our hands on. And a lot of that started with, um, I didn't have any older siblings, but a lot of my friends in this group did. And so it was a lot of stuff either they were hearing in high school or even bringing home like from college, you know, whatever had been playing in the dorm or what have you. And um, one of my friends who ironically was named Jed, still my friend, um, showed up with this cassette uh, the Goo Goo Dolls, which was their second record called Jed. And um, it's fantastic. I mean, it's it's a lot harder edge than what we're probably going to talk about today. But um, and there's some songs that maybe, you know, when you look at them through a 2023 lens, aren't maybe the best, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it was fantastic. And then um, it just took off from there. So, well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. I think that, uh, um, I don't know what happened there. I thought there was feedback for a second. But um, like a lot of people, I f think I first discovered them when they had the hit single name, which was, I guess, their, you know, they had a couple of other singles before that from their other albums. But uh, name came off of the album uh, um, A Boy Named Goo. And right. I think that came out, I'm not sure exactly when. Uh, I'm going to say 95. Yeah, I think, yes, you're right. Yeah, and now I see it here in my notes. I actually did write it down. Okay, yeah, that came out in 95. That's when I discovered them, and I loved that album. That was, uh, like I said, Name was the big hit off of that. And there was a couple others that got some airplay. I remember, like, Long Way Down is a good yep. song. I like that one quite a bit. And then I, um, well, I was going to say that I, I, later on, I eventually bought a copy of Jed after i think it was after dizzy up the girl after i got that and i'm like well let me check out some of the earlier stuff and i i have to be honest i did not give that the chance that it deserved back then we're talking probably around the year 2000 when i bought a copy of that and like you said it was a lot harder than the later stuff that you know maybe became top 40 hits that does not right. in any way mean that it's bad it was just different than what my ears i guess were expecting to hear and back then i wasn't it the case that in the first couple albums um and I may mispronounce the band members' names here. I usually read them and never say them. But um, Robbie Takak, he he was the lead singer then, wasn't he? Or Takak, however you say his name. We're we're both going to butcher him. We'll figure it out, and <laughs> clean it up in editing, or we'll whatever. wait till we get to the guy with two Z's in his last name, <laughs> right? So Robbie, the bassist, yes, he was the primary singer um, on their first record. Uh, Jed was the second one, and then um, Hold Me Up. I think was almost a split and almost an even split. Yeah, that's what looking. it looked like from what I saw here. Yeah. Um, and then slowly they switched. Yeah. They, yeah. They switched a lot. And Robbie still does. I know they put out an album last year and I think Robbie had at least one lead on that. He might've had two. I forget the name of that album off the top of my head, but um, what got us started on this whole thing today was I had seen that recently, it was back in September, was actually the 25th anniversary of the release of the Dizzy Up the Girl album, which is, I think, to this day, still their most successful album in terms of the amount of hit singles that they had off of it and the sales of it. And if you're not familiar with that one, folks, that had a, several hit songs on it. You had um, the biggest one, I think, uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't know how they were ranked compared to each other, but the first one that was a big hit off of it was Slide. And... Uh, right. That was huge. And then you had uh, Iris, which was uh, used in the City of Angels movie that starred Nick Cage and uh, Meg Ryan. Not a bad movie. And then some others like Black Bloon. But uh, so I asked Kevin if he wanted to maybe talk about this album because I knew he liked the Goo Goo Dolls. And he said, sure, I'll talk about it. But my favorite is actually Hold Me Up, the third album. And I'm like, well, I haven't heard that. Yes. So let me give that a listen. And that might be kind of fun to look at the Goo Goo Dolls at the, more so at the beginning of their career before they were household names and, uh, and then compare them to, you know, when they really hit it big later on that decade. So yeah, Hold Me Up, like you said earlier, was the third album. And it's a nice uh, mixture of the lead vocals between Robbie and uh, Johnny Resnick. Resnick? Uh, I'm going I don't Fresnick. Know. Yeah, Resnick. And I like when he was called Johnny instead of John. It just had a great, it's just a great rock star name, you know, Johnny. Yep. But um, so do you, um, so that was one, after you got that one album then, uh, Jed, uh, you've, uh, 
they did they put out an oh wait i'm sorry then came this one then there was another one called superstar car wash but we'll get to that later <laughs> right but uh for this one uh did you have any immediate favorite songs in this or you know songs that you just love more than others so yeah so my first i got it is almost as soon as it came out um oh, cool and the first song is called laughing mm -hmm. and um one thing i will say about this band um, from their first record, at least through the first, at least through uh, Dizzy Up the Girl, is they're really good at putting something really strong as an opener. Um, they are, yes. And in this case, it's a song called Laughing. It's Robbie singing, and and it's just it comes out of the gate at 100 miles an hour, and you know I'm still used to Jed as their sound, if you will, in air quotes, um, and this was just what I, it just checked all the boxes. So laughing is fantastic. Um, just a really strong opener. That's a favorite. Um, I think actually the first couple, uh, maybe no, the next one is Johnny singing, but yeah, just, just the, the way, way you are. are. And then, uh, I, uh, yeah. And then Robbie did the one after that. So out of line, which is a good. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I like that. And, uh, yeah, I, I was telling you before we started recording that, I was surprised by how much I like this album. I put it on the other day. Uh, first listen I had to it was I was just walking slowly on the treadmill at the gym, and the music all the all the songs are pretty rocking. Well, there's a couple that are sl are slower, but most most of them are pretty rocking. Like you said, it comes out of the gate just just great, you know, which is these right. driving guitars and vocals. And I found myself like amping up the speed just a little bit as I was walking. You know, as each song progressed, because I'm like, oh man, I'm I'm really loving this stuff. And I have had. Uh, well, I, I prefer Johnny's vocals usually, and I think, you know, I'm probably not in the minority there because he did become, you know, eventually like the primary singer. And uh, he's got a little bit of a smoother, maybe more quote unquote radio friendly voice. And uh, yeah. but I, there's quite a few I like by Robbie, like one of the first ones that I loved was from Dizzy Up the Girl, uh, Am I Gone, which is a, a yeah. good tune. That's a great song. And I actually, I've seen them in concert a couple of times and Robbie, oh man, he was so much fun to watch in concert. He got into it. You know, he's just yeah. singing. He was just running all around the stage. That guy was, it seemed like he was just loving every minute of it. And, um, and I was, uh, but on some of the albums, I, I, I used to, uh, back in the old days when you made like mix CDs, I remember I, I had made my own, uh, Robbie Free Goo Goo Dolls mixes you know, where I would just put Johnny songs <laughs> right? and uh, I had other ones that I had uh, Robbie on there too. If, Robbie, if you're listening, I, I think you're awesome. But I'm just saying that, you know, there was a preference back then. But now that I'm listening to this older stuff, I, I there's not a single Robbie song on this album that I don't like. It's it's really good stuff. Right. So, yeah, he definitely. He's definitely more of the if you like the old stuff. Robbie is kind of your guy. If you like the newer stuff, Johnny's your guy as far as singing goes, I think. And, um, you know, they got a lot of comparisons to the replacements. Okay. Um, fairly or not, at least, I mean, at least where I, in my little universe. Um, and I think, you know, in a lot of ways, Robbie is sort of representative of like the early replacements, like, sorry, Ma, forgot to take out the trash era. Right, right. Whereas... Johnny, and certainly more so like when we get into talking about um, a boy named Goo and Dizzy Up the Girl is more later era replacements or even Paul Westerberg solo stuff, mm -hmm. um, just in structure and lyrics. Um, but but Robbie still, you know, if you look on Instagram or whatever, he's still got pink hair. He's still running around, like you mentioned, jumping around on stage and having a great time. And I think it's great. So yeah, I do too. I, it's it's hard to not love the guy. You know, he, he's very entertaining, and I just love seeing people love what they're doing. And these guys have been doing right. it now for over thirty years, which is right. amazing, amazing. And um, I, you know, it's funny you mentioned the two different, you know, sounds of them over the, you know, going back to the early days where Robbie was the primary vocalist. I have some friends. I used to hang out with guys, uh, probably probably more so before I got married than now, uh, where I used to hang out in bars a lot. And I was friends with a lot of band members, local bands. And I had a couple of guys who were in punk bands and they loved the early stuff of the Goo Goo Dolls. They said right. that that was their period. And then when they started to become a popular, they kind of lost interest in them. They, they respected that they were good, but, you know, they just preferred right. the more raw stuff. And, I, you know, you'll see that with different bands. A lot of people prefer their early stuff, you know, when they're still hungry, I guess. Right. 
Well, and you know, before before they sign, I think even maybe even as as late as making a boy named Goo, they were still like renting out some guy's attic in Buffalo and had, you know, quote unquote day jobs. I think Johnny was riding his bike. Oh wow. I thought I saw an interview with him when I was reading up like to a bar or wherever he was working in. Um, so, you know, they, you know, it, it was an overnight success. It took like 15 years or however many it was. So. Yeah, um, it's, I'm sorry. I, again, I, I always hate cutting people off. So I apologize about that. Um, I remember, and I, I, I regret this. One of the bars that I used to go to um, back in like the late eighties, early nineties, I remember them playing there, but I did not go to the show. It was before A Boy Named Goo. It probably wasn't too long before that. I guess they were still playing smaller venues at that point, but it was it was a pretty right. big bar for this area, for Northern <laughs> Delaware. But I remember, I mean, how could you, you know, I'm looking at the driving by and I look on the marquee and it's, you know, Goo Goo Dolls. And I'm like, what what the heck is that? You know, <laughs> definitely <laughs> right? such a unique name. And I don't know how they got their name, um, but um, it, it works, you know. Well, they, and you know, they also been talking about stumbling over their last names. They used to go by like Johnny Goo and Robbie Goo. And is that right? <laughs> yeah. If you look on the liner that. notes for Jed, I think it says that. So they should have stuck with that. We would have had an easier time, but <laughs> yeah, we're like the Ramones, um, right? They could have just been yeah. all Goo and that would have been cool. Oh, you know what? I, you are a friend of mine online and you know that I like dad jokes. I've got a, I've got a Goo yeah. Goo Dolls related dad joke for you. <laughs> did you know, did you hear Kevin? that the Goo Goo Dolls are going to be going out on tour with Lady Gaga. Did you hear that? You know what they're calling it? They're going at the Goo Goo Gaga tour. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you probably can't hear, but my drummer's here. I just did a little rum shot. And on that note, <laughs> so let's talk more about this album. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good, man. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's not an original. You know, but, yeah. <laughs> just to kind of tie, you know, you talked about the bar um, that you used to go to. And we were talking about the, the parallels with um, the replacements. There's a song on, I think it's on Disney Broadway. I think it's Broadway. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good, and there's a line in there and I'm totally going to butcher it, but it's basically like, there's a young guy, you know, in an old man's bar waiting his turn to die or I think you've um, got it it's pretty like much the right. refrain. Yeah. And it is like such a Minnesota. I mean, they're from Buffalo, but it is such a Minnesota song like dave perner or paul westerberg could have easily just written that instead and it's like okay now i see why people are starting to draw these comparisons a little bit and i mean it's a great song but it's definitely something that could have easily fit in one of those other uh bands records so and you know yeah. you've i was just gonna say you've mentioned them a couple times and i have to admit i know almost nothing by the replacements I've seen you mention oh. them and rave about them a lot online and some of our other friends from the riff and from plethora of pop. And, um, you know, I don't think it's a band that ever was real big on like radio. So maybe that's why I'm not as familiar with them, maybe on like college radio and things like that. But right. that's a group that I, I'm glad you keep mentioning. I'm going to check them out. Maybe that'll be, maybe I can have you back on to talk about them sometime too. Anytime I could talk all day. <laughs> yeah, I've seen you rave about them. So I'm curious. Yeah. You know, I've got a good dad joke about the replacements. Oh, no. No, no, okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've got no, no more. No more. Anyway, let's get back to Hold Me Up. Um, what's cool is, uh, you know, most of this is original songs that either Robbie or Johnny wrote. And at that point, um, boy, here's another name I'm going to butcher. Their drummer, um, and he actually sang lead sometimes for him, was George Tatuska or Tatuska. And it was yeah. just the three of them. But on one song on the album, there was a cover they did on here that they had a guest vocalist. And the cover is one of my favorite Prince songs ever. And I was kind of blown away when I heard this come on when I listened to the album for the first time last week. And that is Never Take the Place of Your Man. And I heard it and it was just rocking. And then I'm like, who is that voice? I don't know that voice. You know, I know, uh, I don't think it's the drummer. And um, so I thought that was really interesting. They had this guy come in. From what I understand, he was, uh, I guess, a very prominent uh, local musician in their area. Like you said, they're from Buffalo, right? Yep. Lance yeah. Diamond. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from what I, I saw, I just read a little bit about him, that he's this very acclaimed musician and well-loved. And I, I think he has since passed. I know he was older yeah. when he did this, but uh, he sounds awesome on the song. And it's a really great rock and version of that. 
Yeah. And so I think he was a DJ as well. I don't know a whole lot about him other than he was sort of a, you know, a local personality in air quotes that probably everyone in Buffalo at that time right. knew. And maybe none of us that aren't around Lake Erie knew. Um, but they do that one. And then um, he did, uh, I think it's on, yeah, it is on Jed. Uh, they covered Down on the Corner. Get out of here. CCR? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but to me, so so they did those covers with Lance Diamond, and that one specific um, never takes place your man. Really, for me, reminds me of that era. Kind of rowdy, having a good time. I mean, I can see him just you know tearing the roof off of a four hundred person club playing that, and I having him you know jump on stage and do his thing, and then jump back off, or maybe end the night with it. Um, yeah. It's... Yeah, that's that's just awesome. I, I I loved it, and uh, you know, to me, that's always been well. I, I, Prince has got a, or had a ton of really rocking songs, and that's always been, I think, one of his one of my favorites of his more rocking songs. But they they almost out rock Prince on that. I mean, they just they oh, really yeah. they sound great. The guitars on kind that, of, and you can tell they're having a blast. Right at the end, he hits some just ungodly high note, just belts it out, and it's. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, it is. I love it. And another song, another one that I mentioned that uh, I, I've known and loved for, well, gosh, going back to, I think, the earlier mid-80s is the song A Million Miles Away. And they cover yes. that on here. And that yep. is, uh, they do a great version of it. They do. Yeah. And I can't remember who originally did that. The Plimsolls, maybe? Plimsolls. Okay. I, I, I first knew it from the movie Valley Girl. Oh, okay. Age. It was in that. And that was a movie that was on cable all the time back when I was in high school and we watched it over and over again and fell in love with that song. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Johnny sings lead on this one, doesn't he? On yes. Miles. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they really rock it. And just, there's just so many good songs on this album. I mean, really, if you're, if you're not familiar, if you were like me a week ago and you aren't familiar with like too much of the Goo Goo Dolls early stuff, I highly recommend Hold Me Up from 1990. It's a great one. Thank you for turning me on to this, Kevin. You bet. I'm glad you liked it. Really, um, really and it did. is. Uh, a mil their version of A Million Miles Away is one of my favorites. And um, Peter Case, uh, I think Peter Case wrote that. And he was in a band called The Nerves. Oh, yes. Yes, I've heard of them. Okay. And they were the ones that made Hanging on the Telephone originally, which then Blondie made much more that's famous. right so, that's why i heard of them <laughs> and then yeah when they split up peter case and two of the three went to the plimsolls and i can't remember i'll think of their names as soon as we sign off today but that's the way um, it always works for me too <laughs> yes um but um, but yeah it's fantastic it really is it really is and uh yeah just so many good songs in here i um one, I think it was, I thought that I heard that their first single, even though it wasn't a like big top 40 hit, was was from this album. I think that might have been Just The Way You Are. Does that sound about right to you? or? Uh, I think it was, you might be right. I thought it was There You Are. Oh, you know what? You are, you are right. I'm sorry. I just, I, I can't even read my own notes, Kevin. It's... Uh... <laughs> It's horrible. It's horrible. But uh, but yeah, Just The Way You Are, I think that one struck with me because I remember, I think that's maybe the one song I was, I had heard before on from this album. I think yeah. it might have shown up on some um, some compilation that, that I had uh, listened to at one point. But uh, yeah, There You Are is a great tune and I really like it. And I could hear some traces on this album of, you know, maybe what was going to come later too. There, there was something in one song. It's one of the early ones. Um, can't remember right now gosh sure it might even be so out of line or or there you are where i was hearing a little bit of the same sound that i would hear later in like long way down off of a boy named mm -hmm. it, they, you know, there's very similar like you know guitar riffs and things like that and uh you know they they were on to something great with hold me up and obviously you know they had a lot of success after it including uh well let's let's uh we're going to mainly talk about dizzy but i do want to touch upon um the first one, like I said, a, a boy named Goo. Um, that was a well, one of their. That's what really put them out there in the public eye. I think right. you, had, you had a name was the popular song off of that, and uh, I remember when I saw them. I saw them probably around ninety nine or two thousand. I think they were touring for Gutterflower when I saw them then. And uh, you know, oh it was wow, like, okay, 
Yeah, and that was oh, they were so good. They were so I saw them in Camden, New Jersey, and they just put on a hell of a show. And uh, I remember at one point Johnny, right before name, gave this great introduction to it, saying that you know they had been around for so long and struggling, and you know he he uh, said you know and this is the song that really brought us all together and you know made us become friends. And uh, you know I just love love every. He couldn't have been like more appreciative to the audience, you know, in his speech, and it was. I love it. Yeah, I, I love that too because obviously there's a lot of. Well, a lot of the opposite of that out there, you know, where there's, you know, people are like cursing at the audience sometimes or, you know, right. you know, just making it seem like the audience owes them. But um, but yeah, the, these guys, uh, there's always every interview I've ever seen with them. There's just this appreciation for what they have and what they do and the connection they have with their fans. It's kind of I, I'm sorry I missed this, but a couple of years ago, it might have been right before COVID, actually, there was I live in Wilmington, Delaware, and they have a big celebration here every year in one of our parks it's called the uh what's well, called the wilmington flower market but they have bands and things there and johnny was there solo one night he was just oh. him doing a solo set and of course i find out about it two days later you know i it, yep. it's literally it's a it's a five minute walk from my house kevin i, I could have gone there <laughs> it's right that's how it always there. works i know it's a few blocks away but i saw it thankfully being uh, the way the world is now there were like a dozen videos of it on youtube the next day so i saw it and it was the same kind of deal there johnny just couldn't have been more appreciative you know you know just you know talking to the audience and just loving it and you know they somebody would scream out i love you it's like i love you too and and you know i just i just dig that and i'll i'll stop being a geek here <laughs> but oh no yeah. man that's why we're here <laughs> <laughs> that's right we're music geeks but yeah a boy named goo had some good tunes on it um that was uh you still had a mixture of um well most mostly johnny taking the majority of the lead vocals at that point right. but uh do you have any particular other favorites from that long way down is one i go back to a lot long way down is probably my run on that record my runaway favorite yeah Na name of course was the one that brought me to it but uh then i would right. just play long way down over and over again it's a great tune and then uh well that one was really popular but then it led to uh the one that i just fell in love with right from day one it was going back to dizzy up the girl which came out in 98 and just celebrated their 20 it's 25th anniversary right oh boy such a great album i, I fell in love with slaw i was like a lot of fans who who dug a boy named goo i was like okay what's going to happen next are they going to be able to keep the momentum right. going are they going to have more than you know name was like the big top 40 hit off of that album are they, are they going to do better with this one and they did uh slide went through the roof when it came out and that's just a song i i don't know i never get tired of it, it's a great number i like it now i think i think i got pretty burnt out on it for a while no, that's um understandable you know with with a lot of time since i'd heard it um you know coming back to it um it's good song i mean yeah you know yeah. i mean it's it's obviously something you hear in like target or starbucks a yes. lot <laughs> um true which i don't mean to be derogatory but it's nice you know like it's a good track now and it's um you know for a song about somebody that's pregnant and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with you know about it yeah. or how they're going to move forward it's like kind of surprisingly up um, yeah it is surprising you know what I mean? if that makes sense so it's like oh okay yeah. um but even even listening to this record you know quite a few times like in the run-up before i was talking to it i was surprised at how much i liked it now again if that makes sense like i liked it i got sick of it and now it's like oh yeah i really i like the song all right yeah and so, that, to yeah. me that totally makes sense kevin because I, I know i've had that too like you i've fallen in love with music and then you might get to a point where you're hearing it so much you, you might already have the album but then you're hearing it so much on the radio and right. and in other places like if you're just out at a target or some store right. and, and uh, i know for me now this could be the topic of another show too but initially now this is a group that always is the butt of jokes is uh nickelback now early on when when nickelback first became popular i liked nickelback quite a bit and then right i worked in a job where they had this one, one top 40 station on all the time it was monday through friday it was always on you know your whole shift and somebody i guess the program director at this station apparently was a, like a cousin of a guy in nickelback and they played them so much i mean i remember oh, no. one shift one eight hour shift i heard them seven times and Ugh. i was like you, you get burnt out on stuff and it can make you you know 
like that band less and less, or at least like certain songs less and less. And I guess the, maybe the one for me with, from this album that that became the case what, with was uh, after a while, I got a little tired of Iris because you could not escape Iris on the radio. <laughs> and if, yeah. people, if people don't know what Iris is, it, it, I don't think they even say Iris in the song, but that is the ballad that came from um, the City of Angels movie. Right. It's a, really, it's, it's a great song, but it was one that got, uh, if you thought Slide got played a lot on the radio, I think Iris was even more popular, <laughs> at least around my area. Yeah, I um, listening to this one again, I listened to it once just to remember that I didn't like it. I mean, it's cool that they've got a mandolin in there. I don't yeah. know if they were, you know, that was a thing for a little bit with REM and yes, you're you know, right. losing my religion. And then it was on here and I needed to only hear it once. And I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm going to go back and find the other <laughs> ones that I can't remember. So yeah, um, one thing, I, one thing I will say about, you know, say what you will about Nickelback, but uh, the all time, most popular, most read, most clapped, whatever are uh, on the riff and it's not even close, is one about Nickelback. Like, is um, that one of my stories? Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, this, oh, well that's I, interesting. I can't was even it putting down name. Nickelback? She, or? She, she literally wrote one story, like, and it was something like, why does everyone hate Nickelback? Um, oh. And, like, came and went like a ghost. And it's, like, still, to this day, far and away, the most read the most views, the most everything. Wow. So that's really something. I don't know if people, yeah, I don't know if people were hate reading it or it got, um, and it was um, not just views, but like internal reads. So like, it wasn't something that, you know, spiraled off onto Google. And then, I mean, people were like coming to the platform to read it. So. Oh, wow. That's really something. Well, they're, they're really <laughs> a, a big polarizing band. You know, there's they're so much, yeah. they, like I said, they are the butt of a lot of jokes. Um, I remember I, <laughs> For a while, years ago, I belonged to a Facebook group, and it said, uh, "This pickle has more talent than Nickelback." That was the name of it, and and apparently the guys in Nickelback didn't like it. I think they eventually got it shut down. Um, but <laughs> it was kind of funny, Kevin. And um, but um, just I was just I was curious. Just even yesterday, I was like, you know, I think I might want to check out their last couple albums because I haven't listened right. to anything new by them in probably since around 2013 2014 i know it was right before i got married and uh like maybe i had to give them another chance and i was just just reading some different things on wikipedia about the sales of their albums and how they've still been doing and boy they they don't slow down they have one hit after another and uh yeah yeah so I'm, that, that that again that's going to probably be a whole other future show for me because i'm going to check out some of that music that i uh told myself I would never listen to and uh, give it a go. I even saw, I'm going to shut up about Nickelback in a second, but I even saw them once in concert. I might've said that. Did earlier. you really? Yeah, I All saw right. them. They played not far from here. It was when their first big hit started happening. I guess it's where, uh, how you remind me and things like that were mm -hmm. big. There was a club here in Wilmington that I don't know, somehow this club got really lucky because they signed, they had, uh, they booked them and the place was sold okay. out and it was, it was a fantastic show. Jerry Cantrell opened for him. Actually, it was, it was a really great. Oh, nice. Show. Okay. Yeah. And um, it was one of the loudest concerts I've ever been to. And I got a hand it to those guys. They rocked the whole time. And then, uh, you know, I just became a, well, I, I don't an anti Nickelback person, and I'm gonna move on to the Goo Goo Dolls now because that's what the name of this show is. So let's you get, get a lot of shows that come through Wilmington, or do you have to go to Philly? Or uh, now, now it's more so Philly. There are uh, like that particular club was pretty big. It, it it was called Kahunaville. Actually, they had this whole like beach themed thing. It was on like our river here, and uh, they had a great outside deck. But then they eventually and they, they had a lot of big bands there. Um, it was usually people who were, <coughs> excuse me, Kevin, on their way up, you know, or kind okay. of in the middle. You had like. Um, like I remember seeing Eddie Money there, kind of like a few times after, a few years after his okay. hits, he stopped having top forty hits and things like that. And the same with uh, Cheap Trick. It was a period where they were kind of in between gold albums and and Green Day too. After Green Day had the success, I think it with Dookie. Then they had a couple albums that didn't do as well until right. you know they had a resurgence. So th that's when that's how they got axed. But now for the most part, 
you get you have a couple of clubs that will have people like uh do acoustic shows like i saw colin hay the lead singer of men at work at just oh, okay. uh, like three blocks from my house right in downtown wilmington so there's there's nice. like smaller venues that might have things like that which is and lindsey buckingham did an acoustic show at the same place lindsey buckingham from fleetwood max so right you're not going to get big 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 concerts here but like small cool things like that which is fine for me because as I get older, I don't like the big crowds as much. I'd rather go to a right. small thing with a few hundred people as opposed to, you know, a hundred thousand like I used to do up in Philly <laughs> for things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I saw when I saw the Goo Goo Dolls, I had seen them. I mentioned it was in Camden, New Jersey. I don't know. If you probably I don't know if you know where that is, but it's right outside of Philly. So a lot of people okay. instead of Philly, they went there and I saw them there. And then I saw them open for uh, Bon Jovi in Philly. Okay. And they were they were great both times. And both times I saw them, they did a hell of a lot of songs from uh, Dizzy Up the Girl. And we mentioned, of course, already Slide and Iris. And you mentioned Broadway earlier. I think that's a great song. And I like that. a good song. Yeah. Um, January Friend is Robbie's, a Robbie song. That's a, that's a good one. I think he rocks on that one. That's one of my that's one of my favorites. It still kind of reminds me of the old old in air quotes days like hold me up maybe um it's not quite as polished as the rest of dizzy um one one of the essays i read uh there's a lady named kitty wojahoski who writes uh, a substack called good and good for you that wrote just a really awesome essay about um about this record um and her how she found it she's younger than us both um but, you know, she was in grade school when it came out and, you know, listening all night to whatever the station in Austin was. Um, but she she called this uh, she called January Friend a, quote, shitty Green Day song. Um, <laughs> but but sort of said it that. like with love, like, you know, damned with faint <laughs> praise, um, which I which made me laugh. But um, it's a great essay. I'll send you a link so you can check it out. But um, please do. Um, but it kind of is, but it's kind of awesome. And it's one of my that. favorites yeah. on this record. So, um, yeah, it's great. And now that I've gone back and I, you know, when I've heard hold me up you know, multiple times, I've probably played it five or six times since she told it to me, told me about it last week. Uh, I can see what you're talking about, how January friend can, you know, it's kind of a throwback sound to that a little bit. Uh, not that they were trying to do a throwback retro thing, but right. it's just Robbie rocking, you know, and it, it's, it's really good. And, uh, yeah, that one rocks. And I mentioned, uh, um, where well, I already mentioned, am I gone? I, I like that one quite a bit that he does. And then um, I saw he wrote extra pale. I don't know if he sung that one or yeah, I think he did sing that one, but um, yeah, there's some good. Did. And Johnny's got some good rocking songs on here too. Now, I, I, one thing I love about Johnny as a singer is Johnny really sings his songs with a lot of passion. You know, mm -hmm. it can, it, besides, I know obviously he does it on the ballads and that's been probably a big part of the success of them. But his rock songs, uh, I mean, he, he just he just really, really puts a lot into it. Uh, one of my favorites on here is Bulletproof. And yep. uh, the chorus in that, he just, I mean, he really, really gets into it. You know, they're, they're fairly average lyrics, you know, nothing too deep or, you know, mean. I don't want to say they're not meaningful, but you know what I mean. It's not like these are Bob Dylan things or anything like that. But uh, right. But uh, he gets into it, and I, I love that. He was like that in concert, too. It's, it's just outstanding. It's a That one, I think, is a pretty, if I'm remembering the right song, it's, it's pretty generic, but straight ahead, and it's, yeah. it's just a good, solid song. There's a good solo in there, too, I think. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. And these guys for being, I, I I assume that they've always been a trio. You know, I, I don't know if they are now, yes. if they have additional musicians, but... Uh, you know, for just three guys, you have Johnny, you know, lead rhythm guitar and Robbie does uh bass and then he sings too. I don't know if he ever picks up the guitar on songs or not, but, uh, and then they, they've had multiple drummers over the years, but, uh, yeah, they put out a, a great rock and rock and sound always. I think it's a lot of sound coming out of just three guys for sure. Yeah, it is. It is. And, uh, do you have any other favorites on here that we didn't touch upon yet? Um, so my other favorite is, um, Again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, their opener, Dizzy. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you hear the first couple notes, it kind of sounds like um, Heavy by Collective Soul. Oh. Just the first like okay. couple seconds. 
And then it just sort of like bursts into this just wide open chorus where Johnny is just singing, you know, singing to, the, you know, from the tallest mountain and it's just fantastic. Um, so, you know, like I said earlier, they definitely know how to sequence an album and they definitely really do a good job of, uh, you know, side one opener. Yeah, so they do. Um, that's um, one of my favorites for sure. Um, Black Balloon, which I honestly had completely forgotten about until I was playing it. It was like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I remember liking it. I had completely kind of forgotten it, which, okay. Yeah, um, I, I get it. I, I'm the same way with things. And that, that, that for me was sort of the same thing. I remember, I think, I, I can't remember if that was a single or not, but I remember hearing that at least on some of the you know, more rock oriented right. stations around here, but I, but I kind of forgot about it too. You know, I think it's funny how you have an album like this. that is huge, hugely popular, right. and it might have multiple hit singles, but the main ones that you still hear now on, you know, oldies or retro stations are, are just one or two songs from it and then right. the other ones just become kind of forgotten <laughs> but yeah that's a great that's a great tune and there you know obviously that deals with uh drug usage I, and uh but like you like you said earlier with another song they can um i think that's where maybe i think they're a little underrated i i'm you know I, I when i made the comparison before about bob dylan i wasn't in any way trying to say anything bad about their lyrics and songs they write really good lyrics both johnny and right. robbie do but i don't think sometimes they get taken as seriously as a you know as talented songwriters or as a hard rocking band i think a lot of people look right. at the top 40 success of them and they see you know johnny sort of had like the I don't know, sort of like a Bon Jovi kind of thing going on for a while where he had a lot of female fans and he got pushed a lot in the music videos as being the good looking guy. And sometimes I think that, you know, takes some people away from them. And that's a shame because right. these guys are so talented. Well, you can you can tell, you know, we've been talking about the trajectory of their records. You know, if you look at some of the lyrics on Jed or even their first album, um, they're not real deep. Mm -hmm. um you know you have a song like up yours which <laughs> which is you know gold to a 13 year old but oh yeah it's a long long way from something like you know black balloon or even broadway i mean right broadway you know again just to circle back it i mean they're from buffalo but that could be there's a million bars like that out here mm -hmm. um you know where nothing is happening and people are just basically mark you know marking time until yeah. until they're done um they got nowhere to go and nothing to do so um you know and, and johnny got sort of pushed a lot you know he had good hair he was dating a soap opera star or an actress or somebody for a while yeah, yeah, I think. that's right you know they were on mtv spring break um yeah i think actually um Somebody actually referred to him as Bon Jovi, like I think it was Pitchfork in one of their reviews where oh. where they were still in their, you know, Pitchfork was still in their Mean Girl stage and just like just demolished <laughs> the album um, <laughs> before they went through mean and had a change of heart and revamped a bunch of them. But, um, you know, they don't they really don't get credit for that. There's a ton of earnest vocals here or lyrics here um, that either get overshadowed by, you know, some great sounds. And, you know, this record. Um, is certainly a lot more polished, even maybe even more so than a boy named Goo, and certainly more than Hold Me Up. Um, yeah. yeah, very polished. And very polished, very, very Warner Brothers in the late 90s, kind of on brand. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that sort of, I mean, it, it sold them a lot of records, but it kind of like, I don't know if it diminished, but they got, you know, they're, their ability to write a song kind of became secondary, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, I think it definitely drew a line and drew a line there for fans too. Like the older, right. the older ones, like you said, might've been more likely to drift right. away at that point. And, right. you know, obviously they developed a, a very, very large base still of new fans. And I mean, I, I, I love it. I, there's such a great mixture of things on here. Like you said, some harder rock and songs and, uh, you know, some slower ones too. And, um, like a couple of my favorites that we didn't touch upon yet were, or another couple Johnny songs. I like all, all eyes on me. 
a lot. That's uh, another song where he really uh, puts a lot of passion into the vocals and it's got some great guitar riffs. And then the last song, I, I love the title of Hate This Place. I love that Hate that's the place. title. Yeah. I love that that's the closing song on this album. Right. And uh, and that's another one. I don't know if they say, do they say Hate This Place in the song? I'm not sure they do. I don't think they do. Yeah, I don't I have to I don't go back and listen. Either. Yeah, but uh, it's that's got a, it's a great guitar riff that goes all throughout the song, and it's just a, a good tune. It's a good close. I mean, they started strong with this, on this album with Dizzy, and then they finished it with Hate This Place, and uh, it's just a great album. It's not just one of my favorite albums by the Goo Goo Dolls, but it's one of my favorite albums by anybody. I can put it on now in 2023 and enjoy it just as much as I did back in 1998. I was surprised at how well it Cause I hadn't, before we started talking, I, I mean, I'd heard it, but a lot, but I hadn't heard it in a while. And I was surprised at how, what good it sounds still. Some of it is very much 1998 yeah, sounds. Sure. And some of that is down to um, the guy behind the boards, Rob Carvalho. I think that's his name. Oh, okay. Who did, who basically was behind the boards on about a bazillion records during that era. Like, I think he worked with Fleetwood Mac. Um, Jawbreaker on on Dear You. I mean, it's a it's a long list, and you can, if you know what you're looking for, you can hear him everywhere. If that makes sense, um, mm-hmm. that he's really sense. good at putting, you know, a flourish here or or something there, and you can you can recognize him when you know what you're looking for. But um, the one song, uh, All Eyes on Me, like we were talking, similar to Dizzy, like. It, they're really good at, at a radio friendly sound and they're really good at sort of, I don't know if rousing is the right word, but like these really rousing vocals that, you know, they sort of burst into these wide open choruses. It's the kind of stuff that, you know, is easy to sing along to in the car, you know, get right, caught right. singing at a red light kind of a deal. Yeah. Um, but they're also really, really good. You know, you have four or five of those in a row and you're exhausted. Yeah, that's um, true they're really good at sequencing these records, both, both of these two and superstar car wash, um, which we didn't talk about. Um, they're really good at it. Like they'll have something that's just full throttle, something a little more down tempo, down tempo, maybe a ballad in there. Something that brings, you know, the energy back up Mm -hmm. kind of levels off, holds it for a little bit. Um, you know, on this one, you had all eyes on me, and then there's something in between, but then it goes to Iris. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah. there's full, full forever and acoustic three. Acoustic number three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So acoustic number three is very similar to the closer two days in February in my ear on Hold Me Up. Yes. So yes, I can hear that. Um you know, and then they have um Iris, and then we go right to a Robbie song is kind of a palate cleanser, you know, like Cyrus was a lot. And then we have this, you know, kind of, all right, we're back to Robbie. Okay. You know, and everything (laughs) kind of comes back into balance and we're back level again. And then they um, end it with hate this place. So they're, you know, um, just really good at keeping you into the album. Like you don't get tired of it. You don't fall asleep. You know, you're in, you kind of drift off a little relax and then you're pulled right back in. And I think, you know, that's one of, one of their talents that not, and it's not easy to do. No, um, it's not. It's because not. obviously, you know, you can have a producer that moves those pieces around, but you have to make those songs too, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, the way that they set up their albums is brilliant. And and you're right. It's not easy to do because I think of other bands, like for example, um, Journey, I'm a big fan of Journey. And there have been some things that they've done uh, more so like in the past 20 years, you know, not, not in their heyday, but where they might have their lead singer and they've got the, the whole album sounding, you know, I don't know, pretty much, you know, the same. And then they throw like some oddball in there and they don't have it like split up maybe quite as well as the way that you've just described for the Goo Goo Dolls. And uh, sequencing is is critically important. I think, you know, so even some of the most legendary albums that people love throughout the years, even going back to the Beatles or the Stones, you know, if the sequencing was a little bit different, it wouldn't be just the same, you know, it, it's right. got to be done the right way. And I think these guys have nailed it. And I wanted to ask you something. Um, I don't. I don't want to. Did you, any other songs that we missed on this one you wanted to maybe mention? Um, I think. I think we covered them. I, I think so. 
what I we wanted to ask Broadway. you about was, yeah, Broadway is such January a great song. Friend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, Am I Gone? It's a great Robbie song. Uh, you you yep. mentioned Extra Pale and uh, you hate this place. I just can't get enough of ever. I wanted to ask you about Superstar Car Wash. You had mentioned that one and that's one I've never heard. That was, I guess, the fourth album that came yep. out after Hold Me Up. Is that, uh, is that similar in sound to Hold Me Up or is it going more towards what came later? What are your thoughts on it that? Is, it is similar. Um, you can definitely, if you look at it take a high level view you can definitely see they're going way towards a boy named goo and then dizzy as opposed to back towards okay hold me up or jed um but again it's a great sequenced record there's a song called so far away that's just fantastic on it um, oh great yeah you got I, me curious it's good um check that one hold out me too. up is still my favorite hold me up still got the title but um superstar car wash is good Hold Me Up, I think, is really maybe more than anything else, you know, sort of an inflection point where they, for one reason or another, changed things up, really started writing, you know, writing songs um, and and taking their it seriously. Superstar Car Wash takes that, you know, keeps going, you know, on that same trajectory. There's an EP in there somewhere, too, I think. I think it's oh, OK. Bang. Um, which I've never heard, so I have no idea. If, I just know it's in there somewhere. Gotcha. Um, it might even be just remixes or stuff pulled off the other four albums. Um, yeah, and know. then you get to a boy named Goo. You know, they're sort of then new era. You know, now right. they're on. I, you know, they were on Metal Blade Records, and then I think they signed. I can't. I think they signed to Warner for a boy named goo and if not that yeah, you're right for dizzy and that's where um rob cavarlo actually signed them that oh. produced the record so oh okay yeah oh, cool now now how how is your, your relationship with the band been um since dizzy up the girl they've released several you know that album just like i said is 25 years old now they've released i don't know the amount of albums they've released since then but there have been several even including one that they did last year uh, have, have you um have you, have you remained a fan or have you not been listening to their newer stuff quite as much? Uh, I haven't heard. I'm not sure I've heard anything after Dizzy. I'm sure I've heard at least a couple of things, mm -hmm. but if I couldn't tell you anything about them. Um, and that wasn't intentional. Like that just sort of was like almost a natural end point, if you will. Dizzy. Like I, I liked it. I totally. They get were that. big. It was a different sound. Um, it also sort of tied in with, um, you know, when I got, you know, a grown up job and stopped, you know, really going know. to shows and listening to music a whole lot. I know um, exactly what it, you mean. Right. Um, yeah, I've had that with multiple, that. multiple acts over the year, you know, they may, yes. they might, they may be more your thing during a certain phase of your life and then your life right. changes. And it's not that you think that they suck or anything, but you just kind of move on to different things. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know how long it was between Dizzy and their next record. I think it was a while. Um, yeah, maybe not. It was. Yeah, I think Gutter, I, I wrote it down here. Gutterflower came out in 2002. So you're talking, you know, what, four years there? Yeah, four years. Yeah. Now, I like that one quite a bit. I recommend yeah. that to, to you and other people. There's some good tunes on there. Like uh, Big Machine was a hit off of it. Think About Me, uh, Here Is Gone. There, and there's some good rock and songs on there too. There's a great one called What a Scene that I love. It wasn't a radio hit, but uh, okay. that, that's, uh, I would say that's one of my favorite albums by Goo Goo Dolls. And it's funny though, because when I was listening, even just this morning, I was driving around listening to Hold Me Up and I was saying, I could see this make it into my maybe top three or top four favorites by the band. Because I, I just have been, I've played it so many times since you and I talked about it. And uh it's just great. I really, folks, check it out. I feel like I sound like Joe Biden every time I say folks, but you know, folks, <laughs> he lives like three miles from me. So I guess it's now. I was going to say, he is a Delaware guy, right? Yeah, really. He's just down the road. So, yeah. <laughs> but enough about that. Um, now, yeah. And like I said, they've put out other things. I'm just, uh, I, might, I don't mean to be rude. I'm just looking at their, their albums here yeah. and uh, just to see what their, some of their more recent ones are. And I had forgotten it, but the one from last year is called Chaos and Bloom. And that is worth checking out too. Um, yeah, right. I encourage, they, they, one thing I have not heard, I think I've heard, and it's sort of like you, Kevin, I, I, I've moved 
even though I've always liked them, and I think I've listened at least once to all the albums that they've released, you know, since Dizzy Up the Girl, I've never disliked their stuff, but I think I've just, I, I've listened to it, liked it, but it's not things that I've returned to over and over again. Just right. Just I've gotten more, I, I'll have one other band that I am fixated on, you know, and I keep going back to, well, not more than just one, you know me. Uh, yeah. You know, I just get <laughs> find all these acts that I just fall in love with over and over again. They even put out a Christmas album a couple of years ago called It's Christmas all over so oh. and Mir- miracle pill was a good one too from 2020 so okay. there's stuff out there folks and, and really if you're, if you're not familiar if you're only familiar with the song the three or four songs you hear on radio or on streaming services right now check out the older stuff from google Dose. I'm, I'm curious too about now you mentioned how uh jed was their second album had you ever heard the first album kevin i guess it was just called google Goo dolls yeah how's that um, i have it's been a while um one of my friends had, you know, a copy of a copy kind of a deal, but right, yeah. yeah. I, now I want to revisit Jed because, like, I, yeah. I have not heard it in probably 20, over over twenty years, and you know, the, you raving about it now makes me curious, and especially now with me having heard this the Robbie stuff on Hold Me Up, it kind of makes me want to hear the earlier works of Robbie as well on that album. It's a lot, and you'll remember as soon as you play it. But if you remember the song Out of the Red on Hold Me Up it's basically kind of an album of that. Okay. All right. You know, just a lot of Robbie, a lot of rough around the edges, very rowdy. Um, It's a great time. You know, Lance Diamond's on there. Um, Excellent. That is so cool. But it's, it's definitely certainly a long way, even from hold me up and a world away from um, a boy named goo and dizzy up the girl. I mean, they're, you might as well they are two different bands you know i mean there's yeah. obviously a lot of years in between but um yeah they're both great for very different reasons i guess is what i'm trying to say so well, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to visiting yeah. those older recordings from them and kevin i had a fantastic time here and i'm sorry i threw a couple dad well that one bad dad joke on you but <laughs> that, you, you know me that's what i do and i was thinking i, I knew what i was in joke for. of the week here on this show this could be a, the start of something new forgot to pop uh, you know <laughs> bad buddy dad jokes every show okay there goes my viewership and listening ship anyway <laughs> kevin thanks a lot and i encourage thanks everyone watching and listening to check out kevin in the riff i'm going to put links on the notes for this. It'll be both on YouTube and the audio editions of this. So you can check out Kevin's Substack and uh, the Riff publication that we talked about. And, you know, uh, and in addition to Kevin doing a really an outstanding editing job there, folks, you don't understand. Kevin covers, I mean, he gets so many submissions for the Riff and there, there there's so many great articles there every week that are posted. And I know from editing my own publication that that is a lot of work. So really hats off to you for the job that you do. And as someone who writes for you on occasion, I, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. And folks, I, I was where, where I was going with that is too. In addition to being a great editor, he's also a great writer. So read Kevin's stuff. You can, you can see and feel Kevin's love for music in his pieces. And that's one of the things that drew me into the riff was reading articles by him and others there in the riff. So check out Kevin, check out the riff and I don't know, just check out good music whenever you get a chance to. Thanks again, Kevin. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And everyone, thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.